Good day, everyone. Glad that you can join us for this talk. Next slide, please. Who am I? Let's get right into things. I am a black woman. My pronouns are she, her. While I am a cyber policy analyst by training, currently for Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency under DHS, I am a DEI champion and strategist by trade. I'm also the CEO of Midget Family Services, where it is a consultant firm that specializes in leadership, change management, and helping companies grow into diversity and authentic inclusion into the workplace. I am also a reservist with the U.S. Coast Guard, where I have 18 years of duty. Next slide, please. Today, we're going to discuss the problem, some theoretical and conceptual lenses, and implications for managers that they can take back to the workplace today. Next. So let's talk about the problem. The problem for management is that organizations, they're struggling to move beyond diversity to become authentically inclusive. Without being authentically inclusive, there are so many negative outcomes. You have turnover, loss of talent, loss of profit. It could be a toxic work environment. You have low work productivity, mental health challenges, and more. Two major factors that contribute to organizations not being authentically inclusive are implicit racial bias and implicit gender bias. Research has shown that both implicit racial and implicit gender, gender bias is just as relevant today as it's been years ago. Managers have not been able to successfully combat these negative factors because the right frameworks and initiatives are not in place. Leadership and managers must find new ways to move in an organization in a positive way and to be able to accept the cultural change that is needed. Diversity and inclusion in the workplace can help all employees to feel accepted and valued. When employees feel accepted and valued, they are happier and they stay longer with the company. A diverse workforce will help an organization not only fulfill customer needs, but also improve its business reputation. Diversity can increase employee morale and instill a desire to be more effective and work more efficiently. This will greatly increase overall production for the business. When learning about an organization, inclusion is the prerequisite for the functioning of a diverse workforce, and it involves the full and successful integration of diverse people into the workplace. With that, leadership has a major role in the organizational culture. Leadership and the organizational culture shape the characteristics of an organization, as well as make or break the organization. Leadership is a skill used to influence followers and an organization to work willingly towards goals specifically intended for the organization's common good and for individual betterment. As such, diversity implications for leaders and managers are vital in the role leadership must take, servant leadership, by putting people first to help an organization become authentically inclus inclusive. Next, we're gonna discuss three frameworks and a conceptual framework. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. This first figure shows servant leadership theory by Robert Greenleaf. Servant leadership is a vital role which must come first for change and it also will assist with initiating other frameworks for change within the organization. It is very important to understand why this framework is first and how it can help. Employees must have someone that they can follow. And who else better than a leader who puts others first? When an employee feels they have psychological safety, they are more accepting to change. So how do you obtain that safety net for employees? By having the right leader in place. Employees are the greatest asset of an organization. And to enforce that feeling, of being the greatest asset, servant leaders make sure employees feel they are the greatest asset and they are recognized for being the greatest asset. Servant leadership is a philosophy and a set of practices that enriches lives of individuals, builds better organizations, and ultimately it creates a more just and caring world. Servant leadership begins with the natural feeling of a person to serve first, which also brings on the aspiration to lead. In order to become a great leader, one should understand the position of serving and in different aspects of the organization. The servant leader will also focus on the growth and well-being of the people and the communities in which they belong. That's very important. 
Traditional leadership exercises power from the top of the pyramid and they're more authoritative. However, servant leaders share power while putting the others, the needs of others first. This type of leader helps develop and helps individuals perform to the highest level possible. This not only helps the individuals reach goals, but organizational goals as well. A critical factor for understanding the success of an organization are leaders. The servant leadership theory is a framework that an organization can use as a cultural structure that will help an organization move in that right direction. When leaders are dealing with implicit and racial bias, those leaders must strategically position themselves throughout the organization to help change the culture. Next slide, please. This figure is the organizational culture framework by Edgar Schein. This figure shows five small outer circles all feeding into the organizational culture, which is at the center. Then the organizational culture is feeding back into those outer circles. One cannot happen without the other. This theory presents basically three levels of the organizational culture, which are necessary to understand in order to have an effective leadership and organizational culture flow. So first you have the artifacts. The artifacts are surface cultures. You have such as how we dress, where it's something that is known, but it's not something that's easy to decipher. Then you have espoused values, which are conscious goals, strategies, philosophies. And then last you have basic assumptions, which are unconscious beliefs and values that form the core of the culture and everything that we do. Culture is how things are done in the workplace. If the culture is negative and toxic, then the employees of the organization will be unyielding to diversity and inclusion practices. Values are very important for the organizational culture. The most successful change programs reveal that large organizations connect with their people most directly through values and that the values are ultimately about beliefs and feelings. This framework allows for the organization to freeze in place and to look at the importance of change. Several factors come into play when discussing the overall culture, such as deliberate role modeling, teaching and coaching by leaders. This takes us back to where the servant leadership can lead by example at its best. Because leaders are role models and teach employees, leaders' behaviors can be expected to have a significant impact in communicating the organization's culture. Every day culture is being formed and every day is an opportunity for positive influential change by the right leaders in place. Next slide, please. Here you have what is called the diversity management framework. The diversity management framework has two components, institutional theory and resource theory. They focus on the macro and micro levels of the organization. Here is where you will have leaders working with individuals to make sure these policies are put into place and are communicated out to the organization correctly. Diversity management uses applied behavioral science methodology, research and theory, and is to manage organizational change and the stability processes that support the diversity in the organization. And it also eliminates oppression to improve the health and effectiveness of an organization, but it also affirms the values of respect for human differences, social justice, participation, community, authenticity, which is very important, lifelong learning and more. Being that diversity management is a cross-disciplinary field, organizations can easily use this theory as its own framework. Different human experiences provide an organization with a benefit for diversity. Diversity management also incorporates values, which in turn comes from the organizational culture, leadership, and management. The different cultural perspective and work styles of all employees lead to a widening and reframing of the issues around what work the organization does and how the organization does it, which is very important. 
When you focus on the institutional dairy aspect, that draws attention to the role that social forces play in influencing organizational actions, including how organizations seek and gain legitimacy. This deals with the structure of the organization that will include employees' behaviors, factors of laws, rules, regulations, and social and professional norms. The resource theory, this aspect draws on organizational resources. So you have financial, physical capital, human capital, and diversity management practices. This theory has implications on diversity management practices, which is the set of formalized practices developed and implemented by organizations to manage diversity effectively. The alignment of these theories are critical because if organi organizations underestimate the value of diversity, then the organization will make insufficient investments in diversity management. If there are different views of diversity because of lack of diversity frameworks and initiatives, that can negatively affect diversity management practices as a whole and organizational effectiveness in that organization. We have all seen when employees have different views because it has not been communicated correctly, because it is not in writing, because they don't have nobody that they're able to follow to help them understand what is important, where it's important, how diversity inclusion comes to help the organization and how it can overall help the employees at its best. Next slide, please. So what you see here is a conceptual framework. This figure shows all three theories working together. Servant leadership comes together with diversity management and they feed into the organizational culture. Both diversity and leadership help form the culture. Without both in place, the organization will face challenges which are gonna ultimately lead to, lead to failure of becoming authentically inclusive. As you can see, the servant leader portion shows not only the individual goals, but also organizational goals that feed back into the culture. This is very important because if these goals are not being met and they're not feeding back into the culture, this is not a positive function in organization. But however, when it all works together, it in turn leads to positive organizational culture, business satisfaction and performance. With the right policy in place, it holds the organization accountable. Next slide, please. So now let's talk about what we can do right now for change. First to assist, we have the change, first to assist with change against implicit racial and gender bias, an organization will need a leadership team. This leadership team will help facilitate that cultural shift that is needed. Since followers take their behaviors quest from leadership, there must be a leadership foundation in place that reflects the organization's cultural goals. True diversity frameworks and programs go beyond just regular talks and minimum training. And you know they have actual change agents in place. Leaders can overcome the shortcomings of prior failed programs and frameworks. As such, one option is to have this team. And on this team, the main leader should be a servant leader. Those in the past who had who held social, you know, major social mu movements held uh, similar attributes to those of servant leaders. For example, you have Mother Teresa. She dictated her life to serving other people. Like other servant leaders, no one can question her motives beyond her desire to help others. This team can also consist of multiple leaders with different leadership styles. As other leaders first focus on the business, a servant leader focuses on individuals first. When you bring them together to collaborate, that will allow for the leaders to not only work together, but also break down the barriers in order to become authentic. Because you must have one group of leaders to focus on the individuals, the others to focus on the, the business, and they bridge those gaps to make them work cohesively together. The team will focus on an understanding of cultural competency as a prerequisite for understanding the role of diversity and inclusion within the organization. The team will foster a psychological safety net while promoting inclusivity and diversity maturity. The goal is to instill inclusivity in the organization's mission 
and the values. The team will demonstrate good character and their willingness to understand the importance of incorporating diversity. The team will also develop a new culture that allows organizational members to participate in and promote an inclusive work environment for all. Next slide, please. So what we have here is a diversity and inclusion framework. Every organization needs this framework. There is a lot to discuss, so we're just gonna focus on the top parts. This framework should include topics and policies at both the macro and micro level, such as the ones we discussed earlier, as well as the workforce psychological needs, which will improve strategy effectiveness. An organization is like a puzzle where leaders must put the correct pieces together in order to have a finished picture. The leadership team, which we just discussed, will assist with the framework and utilize the diversity management theory to help steer the organization in the right direction. Human resources, senior leaders, and managers all should play a key role in building a diversity-friendly organization and enforcing how that organization should run. Therefore, all would have a hand in this framework. And that, that, that's only a couple of individuals that need to be in this framework. You will also need to, a lot of leadership from top levels and managers like CEOs and presidents to really understand because this should be covered not only at the level of the employees, but at the top as well. Organizations must understand that just because they mention or have a policy about diversity does not necessarily mean that they are diverse or inclusive. Key components for diversity and, inclu and inclusion framework start with diversity and then you add inclusion. Combining the two will create a framework for the organization to succeed in many different aspects. Those aspects can range from reputation to profit. Part of this framework is influencing organizational behaviors that start at the top of an organization. The organization should put specific people in top positions that will help the organization to succeed and serve. Again, this is where your servant leadership comes in. Servant leaders will serve at the type to help communicate the messages that are needed from this framework and throughout policies. Other areas you will want to focus on will be employees' behavior. You have factors of law. You have rules, regulation, and social and professional norms. This framework should also include strategy design to match business objectives and policy that aligns the organization's objectives with a strategy on diversity. Diversity initiatives, policies, and frameworks all must be included to match the overall business objectives. Each organization is unique, to, so exactly what is needed will be different per organization. However, having everything in writing and aligning with business strategies will prove successful. Next slide, please. And finally here, we have training. Training is always important with anything new, incorporating you know, anything you have from diversity to inclusion, to understanding biases or anything that could be a barrier. A current practice, right now, current practices that organizations have is to have their employees complete maybe a one-time training just annually. However, one-time training is not enough. It does not lead to lasting change, nor does it reflect a deep commitment to becoming authentically inclusive. Structural racism cannot be overcome by picking once a year online training. The organization must engage with employees on an ongoing basis and respond to their experiences. Diversity training is a step forward. However, with specific diversity training targeted to deal with identified organizational shortfalls, Employees become more aware of implicit bias and other barriers to diversity and inclusion. This motivates positive behaviors and attitudes, which are essential for creating and maintaining a respectful and inclusive environment. To assist, an organization can hire a third party assistant with subject matter experts who understand behavioral challenges and resistant and who also have the expertise in training against biases. In today's world, being diverse and inclusive is not part of the industry culture and requires a fundamental shift in behavior. Changing someone's bias requires a form of interruption and repetition. It's like, you know, you have a two-year-old and you have to tell them no. 
it's repetition. They hear the word no, and then they finally understand, okay, this must change. This can be done through uh, action-oriented training. These experts will work with leaders and teach and provide the training. Next, I recommend you have a diversity training task force. It is noted that one training effort is not enough to change behavior and can harm diversity efforts by creating more bias against underrepresented groups. An option is for an organization to have a diversity training task force who will help the organization with training by incorporating diversity goals into performance plans. This task force would work with leadership teams and management. Then we have manager training. Managers are responsible for hiring, promoting, and firing. Key to their role is moving an organization from diversity to uh, inclusion is understanding how they are a standard bearer of the organization's culture, codes of conduct, and policies for their teams. Managers, like leaders, lead by example. Though their daily interactions with employees, managers are dealing with diversity issues, they have interpersonal conflicts, and overall organizational challenges. Therefore, managers and how they are trained are critical to the organization. Finally, if the organization is trying to lay out different forms of training, you can have a pilot program. And it's recommended that you start these programs in phases. The organization can have about one to three pilot programs at once in different areas to test out how the training can work. And then you can measure the outcomes. Examples of measured outcomes is how does the employee feel valued? Are they now feeling valued now that they've had more training and others ha have had more training? How ha are policies being measured? Are those policies now proven to be successful? Do you have the right data in place to measure the outcome successfully of implementing new policy? How have best practices been ingrained into the organization? So measuring for success is very important once you are laying all this out. Key is that training starts when an employee onboards and then it is consistently every month, quarterly, yearly, as long as an employee is there and new training is there and reflective training is there to offer to you know more information about diversity and inclusion and to make the organization's values and commitment to diversity and inclusion clear. Next slide, please. I want to thank everyone who took the time out today to come and listen to my talk about authentic inclusion and moving cultures that go beyond diversity by using servant leadership to put people first. You see my email, midgetfamilyservices at gmail.com, where I can take any questions or you can put questions in Discord. Thank you.